welcome to the November 2018 edition of Rowlett on the Water, on the Move. I'm Tammy Dana Bastian, Mayor of the City of Rowlett. And I'm Brian Funderburg, Rowlett City Manager. Well, Brian, there's so much going on in our community and the holidays are right around mm -hmm. the corner. They are, Mayor. Time is flying by and there's so much going on in the city. There is, and we wanted to make sure we updated our public on all the construction projects mm -hmm. that are happening around our, our town. So we have a new segment called our Construction Corner. Put on your hard hat, Brian, and here we go. All right, here we go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Over the past years, you've probably seen construction around Rowlett that was approved and funded through the bond elections in 2015 and 2018. Today, we're going to give a brief overview of what's been completed, what's currently under construction, and what's next. So, Brian, we have some summary information here on the 2015 and the 2018 bond election. Can you go over that briefly? Absolutely, Mayor. So, as you know, in 2015, we had uh, $25.7 million in uh, projects, and in 2018, almost $60 million in projects. What's really exciting, Mayor, about the 2015 project, so all projects are now either let, under construction, or completed. From the 2015 bond? Yes, ma'am. So let's talk about those projects first. Okay. So the first one up is our Primrose Lane street reconstruction. So what a beautiful new um, area we have now. Mayor, and this uh, included, this project included a lot of different pieces. The scope included a sanitary sewer line, there were streetscaping, drainage improvements, sidewalk improvements. It looked like a whole new street. And we had our ribbon cutting in August. Yes. We want to celebrate our successes. So what a great project we had there. And the next one we're going to talk about is uh, phase one of Dow Rock Estates. And again, Mayor, uh, we did start construction on this on November 27th, uh, 2017. Again, it also includes streetscape enhancements, and then there were some uh, utility improvements with the water lines and the sanitary sewer drainage, and then, of course, the reconstruction of uh, the streets and sidewalks. And sometimes people don't see everything that's going on underground, mm -hmm. right? Don't that's understand right. everything that is involved in some of these street reconstruction projects. It's mm -hmm. not just repaving the street. That's There's right. a lot of work that has to be done underneath. And this project is complete. And then the next one up we'll talk about is our Phase 1 Highland Meadows street reconstruction. So, Mayor, this was another one um, that was awarded by Council actually in December of 2017. Again, streetscape improvement, sewer uh, was replaced, water lines were replaced, storm sewer was added. Did not have storm sewer in that area. That's also going to improve the life of this project. And then, of course, we reconstructed the streets and sidewalks. The project is substantially complete. Uh, and as you can see from the picture, it just looks wonderful. Absolutely. And, and you know, this does a lot to our neighborhoods. And we mm -hmm. have one of our core values is valuing our neighborhoods. So very important to our community. So uh, another item that was funded by our bonds was the traffic signal at uh, Chiza and Liberty Grove. And that project uh, began in October 27, and it is now complete. And the people that live up there are very appreciative of that new traffic yes, signal. Yes, they are. And then Phase 1 Lake Country Estates. Um, this is one of our latter projects. Uh, it actually was uh, let on July 3rd of 2018, so they just began construction in September. Uh, it's going to have, again, streetscape en enhancements, water lines, uh, sewer, um, reconstructing the seats and sidewalks, and then uh, a cut-through uh, street between Skyline and the village of Rowlett. So if you're in these neighborhoods, uh, advice to you is... Um, be patient. Be patient. <laughs> Be patient. You will like the end result. Yes. And we understand that it is short-term pain for long-term gain. That's right. Uh, Main Street reconstruction and right turn lane on North PGBT in Maine. Again, Mayor, this is one of the ones, uh, one of the last projects that we had. So much has to go into a project like this because of the utilities. We're trying to underground all the utilities, particularly the electric lines, rather than having them overhead. So as a result, we have just let that bid. Um, it, was a, it will be awarded for contract uh, November the 6th, uh, replacing the sanitary sewer. There'll be new water services, storm sewer, concrete paving, sidewalks and landscaping, and a right turn lane on uh, North PGBT on the Main Street that will improve uh, stacking for our cars. Absolutely. We're excited that we'll get started soon. And then uh, Pecan Grove. Well, another project that's complete. Um, there was park lighting in front of the RCC. Uh, back on RC, back of RCC and along the short trail by Coal House. Uh, new picnic tables 
And then outdoor fitness equipment. You can see, Mayor, uh, one of the uh, types that we did, but uh, they're, they're staggered all along the trail so people can get out and work their uh, various body parts uh, while walking on the trail. And if you haven't been back there, that's a beautiful area and very, very good fitness equipment now. And then our wet zone water park had a lot of improvements this it last uh, summer, spring and, and summer. And again, uh, the project is complete. Uh, we added a new slide feature, resurfaced the pool bottom, uh, new foam, uh, you know, uh, floatables, new signage, new restroom fixtures. Uh, so absolutely a whole lot of stuff done, looks wonderful. You know, that's an important asset for our community. We need to make sure we keep it in condition that it needs to be in. So very, very important for our community. And then, um, of course, all of us know the New Kids Kingdom was complete. That was part of the bond funding. Yes. Um, seems many years ago now, mm -hmm. but it was part of the 2015 bond funding. So. And it was one of the earliest projects that we did um, with the bond funding. So it, it's, it's complete, too. And receives uh, wonderful reviews. Mm -hmm. It was named one of the coolest playgrounds in the United States, and it is very, very important amenity for our community. And then Paddle Point Park. Yes, Mayor, another project is complete. Um, we had a concrete parking lot put in, uh, trees and grass. We did the sidewalk uh, from the parking lot to the dock. We actually even added a floatable dock uh, to help uh, those that with uh, disabilities be able to enter their kayaks uh, with some assistance. Uh, so it's great, a great facility. And this is a beautiful area to kayak, absolutely mm -hmm. gorgeous. And our Public Safety Training Center, if you can give us the status of that. I can. So the Rayo Tower is completed, Mayor, and in service. What we're doing now is uh, we just recently, on November the 5th, uh, we'll start the uh, site work and civil work. Um, you can see kind of a, a picture of what we're looking at. This will provide the ability for our firefighters and, and actually even public safety, or excuse me, police and public works to be able to do training. Uh, very important and critical that this training be provided. Uh, we have been going elsewhere for uh, many, many years. Uh, this will provide that in-house, uh, be able to do that training in-house. Absolutely. So, Brian, we have lots of different projects mm -hmm. uh, slated for our 2018 bond funds. Do you want to talk about a little bit of those? Dalrock Estates Phase 2, maybe to start with? Sure, Mayor. Um, so, Dalrock Estates Phase 2, Highland Meadows Phase 2, Miller Road at Dalrock and Cheesa, and then Lakeside to Paddle Point Park, uh, pedestrian uh, crossing. Those are projects that should be started in 2018, 2019. Um, there are some other projects that will be designed during this period, and then when we issue the next set of bonds next summer, they'll be ready to go. That includes Lake Country Estates Phase 2, the widening of Cheesa from Dalrock to south of Miller, Fire Station Number 2, Hereford Park Phase 1, and then Community Shorewood Springfield Park and Nature Trail. And when we do these bond projects or these bond offerings, we had a $60 million mm -hmm. bond offering. That's a three year period that we obtain those funds. So we already obtained 20 million of that. Yes. And then a year from now, we'll get another 20 million. And a year from then, we'll get another 20 million. That's exactly correct, Mayor. We, we have targeted these three year bond elections because we feel we can get those projects done during that time period show the public that their projects will be complete, and then move on to the next election. Absolutely. So this uh, project is being designed only at this time. Uh, we're about 60% complete on the design, uh, and it's currently in the environmental phase. Uh, as you know, Mayor, this goes over Muddy Creek. So as you can imagine, um, you know, there is a lot of federal regulations that have to be solved for uh, you know, to make sure this project is done right. Um, so, uh, council has selected the bridge design and the lighting options, so we now know that. Uh, we're expecting the design to be completed in early 2019. Now, Brian, why do we spend this money on this design when we have not funded the actual construction of this project? Th this is an expensive project, but it also can qualify for grant funding. Uh, we're hoping to be able to have a shovel-ready project so when we compete for these projects that we have a higher chance of getting those projects funded. Uh, at this point, we're hopeful that we will be able to secure a grant, but without having the design ahead of time, uh, then it's, mo it le it's unlikely it'll happen. And, and this is an important interconnector road for our uh, growth in this community. So Mayor, as you indicated at the beginning of this segment, there is an awful lot going on in Rowlett, and a lot of projects going on, and a lot of activity. You know, there's a lot of growth in North Texas, and there's growth in Rowlett, and it's very important that we invest in our infrastructure. And we do that 
in a smart way and we do that in a methodical way and we're really making progress in this town and um, we appreciate all our residents patience as we work through these construction projects because they're so important for the uh, growth of our community. Well, Mary, and you're absolutely right. Uh, one of the things that I hear from uh, residents the most for those projects that are completed is uh, excitement, very happy that their projects are done. For those that are going through the construction period, patience would be appreciated. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Great news for those utilizing our DART Go Link service. An additional vehicle has been added to better serve Rowlett Monday through Friday from 6 a.m. to 8.30 p.m. Go Link is the personalized DART shuttle service servicing Rowlett by request. You can take it to work, run errands, or connect to other DART services. To schedule a ride, you can download the new app by searching Tap Ride in the App Store or the Google Play Store. Don't have a smartphone? You can book your trip by calling 214-452-1827. Phone reservations must be made at least 30 minutes in advance. So Brian, the uh, GoLink service we went live mm. with, gosh, a couple months ago now. Yeah. We were servicing, uh, DART was servicing half of our city before mm -hmm. and opened it up to the entire city a, a few months ago with their new GoLink service. It has been such a big hit. Mm -hmm such um, high demand for it, we've had to add a third vehicle. Mayor, this is great news. And the other thing, you see them everywhere. So this is not just limited to a certain area, maybe just around the DART station, but anywhere in Rowlett, you can call that number, have them come pick you up and get it scheduled within about a 30 minute period. Yeah, and that's, and that's when it's on phone. If you use your mm -hmm. app on your phone, um, not just calling the mm -hmm. number, but use your app on the phone, the, the service is much quicker. It can be up to, you know, 10 minutes. Is, is very common for mm -hmm. that service. So we're very, very excited. We were the first city in um, our area that got that service citywide. So that was very nice. What a great program for our citizens. It's time to head to the polls. Texas will hold its general election for 2018 on November the 6th. Here's some details on voting locations, dates, and times for Rowlett citizens. The early voting site in Rowlett for Dallas County Rowlett registered voters will be at the Annex Conference Room located at 4004 Main Street in Rowlett. Remaining early voting dates for this location in November are Thursday, November 1st through Friday, November 2nd, both 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. Then on Election Day, Tuesday, November the 6th, the polls will be open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. The early voting site in Rowlett for Rockwall County Rowlett registered voters, precincts 1A and 2B, will be at the Cullens Lake Point Elementary, located at 5701 Scenic Drive in Rowlett. Remaining early voting dates for this location in November are Thursday, November 1st from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. and Friday, November 2nd, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Then on election day again, Tuesday, November the 6th, the polls will be open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Photo ID is now required to vote in Texas. For more information on how to vote and to look up your precinct, visit Dallas County Votes, all one word, dot org. If you would like additional information about voting in the city of Rowlett, contact the city secretary's office at 972-412-6115. Mayor, it is a November election again, November the 6th. Boy, it came up on us fast and it's very, very important. We hope that all of our citizens get out there and vote. You know, the last citywide mm -hmm. election, we had pretty good participation and we hope that this uh, midterm election uh, voting event also has, you know, very high participation by our citizens. It's important. Well, Mayor, as you know, uh, the last election, we actually had a record turnout in Rowlett as well as across the country. Uh, it would be nice to do that again, even though it's only a midterm election. Absolutely. Due to weather-related safety concerns, the Tri-City cleanup of Lake Ray Hubbard shoreline scheduled originally for October 20th was rescheduled for Saturday, November 3rd. Please join volunteers from the entire DFW area as you are invited to join them in cleaning up the litter that flows down Rowlett Creek and washes onto our shoreline. You can sign up at www.tricitycleanup.org. So this is our uh, next Tri-City mm -hmm. Lake Cleanup. Very, very um, important event for our lake shore. It's really wonderful that we get all three cities involved, the city of Rowlett, the city of Garland, and the city of Dallas. You know, Mayor, it's, uh, it's always a good turnout. Uh, so many people are concerned about this issue. 
Um, you know, it matters to the city of Rowlett, to the city of Garland, uh, to the city of Dallas. Uh, all three cities combining together just makes such a great effort. You know, these re recent rains, we have just seen so much flow down into our area. It really has highlighted the importance of mm -hmm. these cleanup efforts and hopefully someday a way to stop this flow of trash down to our lake, our lake shore. Absolutely. Until that day, Mayor, we just got to keep getting out there and uh, keep our lake clean. Hi, I'm Dave Genser with the City of Rowlett Code Enforcement, and today we're here with uh, Neighborhood Life, Rowlett Code Enforcement, and Keep Rowlett Beautiful. And we're happy to announce that the 2008 Light Up Rowlett Contest will be starting on Friday, November 23rd. Today I'm going to be talking with Ruben Gallegos, the last year's winner from the Northwest District of Rowlett. So welcome, Ruben. How are you doing this evening? Uh, I'm doing great. Thank you for having me here. Thank you for coming. Um, How did you start doing your... Uh, great display. Uh, I started actually about 11 years ago so um, I have my daughters with me all the time and they're always motivating me to go out there and put the lights up and see what I can do with them. So your kids obviously enjoy helping you? Most definitely if it wasn't for them I, I wouldn't be doing them really but then I started enjoying it because my girls started enjoying it awesome. and once I start getting the neighborhood kind of looking they felt very happy to see it so mm -hmm. now you know I keep doing it every year. Yeah, how do your neighbors like it? Do you have any compliments um, from your neighbors? Do they try you know to what? compete against you? Anything going on? You know on what? There? A lot of compliments. A lot of people do drive down and visit the light show. Uh, and we actually have some great neighbors uh, out there. We have three great neighbors that actually compete with me. And it's uh, pretty fun, and uh, especially when the girls are looking at all the lights throughout the night to see which one is better. Um, actually, I do have people already talking to me about what they're going to do in their displays. I haven't told them mine, uh, just because it's going to be different from every other year. Um, and it's just going to blow everybody away once they see it. So be ready. So, <laughs> so no hints, no... Uh, um, you're not going to throw a teaser out there for us? Uh, green. Green. That's all I can say, green. Well... <laughs> Green's a, a good color for a Christmas. A lot of green. <laughs> a lot of green. Okay. Actually, we were talking earlier, and mm -hmm. you said uh, you're also involved with um, the neighborhood uh, watch in your area? Most definitely. So um, I'm actually one of the uh, neighborhood captains, and uh, I do have Carissa that is in charge of the neighborhood watch. Um, and uh, it all started with an app that I built. It's called uh, Kenwood Heights Watch. And I did it for the sole purpose of protecting our own neighbors in the neighborhood. So it was only four or five of us. And we said, you know what, we need to get together to make things happen, to uh, protect our neighborhood. Uh, it really uh, made a difference. And, you know, speaking of difference, you know, I, I would like to say, you know, if it wasn't for the Neighborhood Watch and the Kenwood Heights Watch page at Facebook, uh, we wouldn't have gotten together the way we did with a lot of things that have happened in our neighborhood. To nominate a display, you can either hashtag light up Rollette, or you can email your photo or video to neighborhood life at rollette.com. Nominees will open on the day after Thanksgiving and will stay open through December 16th. On Monday, December 17th, nominations will be closed and voting for the favorite display will begin. The winners will be posted on December 19th. Join us for the annual Main Street Fest on Saturday, December 1st from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. It's time to kick off the holiday season with a night filled with live music, photos, letter writing to Santa, and much more. Come visit downtown Rowlett to see the spectacular tree lighting ceremony. This year's event will be in conjunction with the Rowlett Chamber of Commerce Sunset Santa 5K. The 5K will begin at 4 p.m. with live music and activities. The tree lighting ceremony will begin at 5.45 p.m. Then the following weekend, it's the second annual lighted holiday parade on Saturday, December 8th from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. Come see the streets of downtown Rowlett filled with decorative floats, live music, and Christmas cheer. 
Prizes will be awarded to parade float winners in different categories. The parade route will wrap around downtown Rowlett on Main Street, finishing in front of City Hall. Celebration begins at 5 p.m. with family activities and fun, and the parade will begin at 6 p.m. Stick around for pictures with Santa once the parade has ended. Are you looking for the ideal setting for your holiday occasion or party? The Cole House rental facility might be the place for you. This charming and historic house is nestled in the breathtakingly picturesque Pecan Grove Park. The 2,000 square foot facility dates back to 1918, and once inside, you'll instantaneously notice the rustic elegance that radiates throughout the house's numerous rooms. Tour this beautiful house for your holiday event. For more information and a tour, call the Rowlett Community Center at 972-412-6170. Mayor, as always, we have a ton of events uh, for the holidays and uh, very excited that uh, we're finally there. I'm so excited. The tree lighting is so special mm -hmm. and this will be our second annual parade. Last year's parade was incredibly mm -hmm. Uh, attended and loved, just absolutely loved it. It was a great way to kick off our festivities mm -hmm. in our community. So if you're interested in uh, being a part of the parade, make sure you register your float mm -hmm. and um, we hope that we have just a wonderful event again this year. And don't forget the Coal House. It's a beautiful facility um, for any event you may have. So uh, hopefully people will take advantage of that again this year. Especially during the holidays, it's decorated very nicely. Young artist, it's your time to shine. Kindergarten through 12th grade students who live in or near DART's 13 city service area can now submit entries for the 2019 DART Student Art Contest, capturing the theme, My Next Stop Is. The contest offers an opportunity for area school kids to share their experience, flex their creative muscles, and consider DART's impact on their communities. The winner's artwork will be displayed at the Dallas Museum of Art, Love Field Airport, the Courtyard Theater in Plano, and on DART's website, dart.org. That's a lot of exposure. Deadline for the entries is November 30th, and the final deadline is January 25th. Visit dart.org forward slash art contest to get more information and to download an entry form. Another way for our artists to get involved and to uh, showcase their work. That's very, very, very nice that DART is holding this contest. You know, Mayor, and it's a great opportunity not only um, to be showcased, but to do it in such a wide venue. Um, so that ought to be very exciting to our artists. There's a lot of people that see, mm -hmm. uh, see that art in Dar mm -hmm. at the Love Field, so that's, that's great. Same. On Sunday, November 4th, it's time to fall back and set clocks back one hour to mark the end of Daylight Savings Time. The Rowlett Fire Department would like to remind you of the simple life-saving habit of changing the batteries in your smoke and carbon monoxide alarms every time change. Change the batteries when you change the clock. Proper installation, operation, and maintenance of smoke alarms reduce the risk of property damage, injuries, and even death. In addition to smoke alarms, CO alarms should also be checked this weekend. Carbon monoxide is the invisible killer. It's a colorless, odorless gas and it can kill within minutes. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, just 42% of households report having a working carbon monoxide alarm. Changing the batteries in your smoke and CO alarms is the easiest way to ensure protection of your loved ones and your home in the event of a fire. You know, Mayor, it's just, it's just good business to be doing that. Um, all of our uh, citizens uh, can be safer in their homes if they just had the carbon monoxide alarms and if they just simply changed that battery, um, you know, at least every time change, roughly every six months. And, and if you are elderly and you're not able to do that yourself, how can they get help, Brian? Mayor, our um, fire department will help. Um, CERT also does that. Uh, they, uh, they, they replace so many batteries, even free of charge every Absolutely. year. It's just what a great organization. So if you can't get up on a ladder, if you can't change your own batteries, please uh, give them a call. Yep. The City of Rowlett is proud to honor and celebrate the men and women who bravely served in the United States military past and present in a patriotic Veterans Day ceremony on Saturday, November 10th at 11 a.m. Held at Veterans Park in downtown Rowlett, everyone is invited to this free celebration to meet, honor, and thank our veterans. In the case of inclement weather, the Veterans Day ceremony will be moved inside the Rowlett Community Center. We hope to see you on Saturday, November 10th at 11 a.m. as we show our support and appreciation to those who have made the sacrifices for our freedom. 
We're excited about another celebration event for our veterans. It's very important that we take this time and make sure we honor those that have served us. Brian? You know, Mayor, this is a, a great opportunity each time. Uh, we have so many veterans in our community. Uh, they have sacrificed so much, not only for their country, but also for our, our community, our town. Uh, we're very proud of them, and what a great way to express that. So, Mayor, tell me a little bit about the veterans program that we do at City Hall. So, um, we started this about a year ago, and we honor a local veteran, a Rowlett resident who is a veteran, every two months. And it's just a great way we do that at a city council meeting. We make um, a big deal about it mm -hmm. because it is a big deal. And we have lots of people that come and honor them and we present them with flags that have flown over the state capitol. Um, our representative Cindy Burkett has done that. We um, have Quilt of Valor that we offer them and we offer them a proclamation. And um, we just make this a really, really big deal to make sure that we show our appreciation for our Rowlett residents that have served our country. You know, and Mayor, it's so interesting to see them come in with their families and so often it's their children, their grandchildren, sometimes their great grandchildren. So what a wonderful program. Do you subscribe to the Friday at 5 newsletter? The city manager's office prepares this weekly update with information, statistics, projects, and pictures about each department. The Friday at 5 is available after 5 p.m. every Friday afternoon on the city's website and Facebook page. You can also subscribe to the newsletter for instant delivery right to your email inbox by visiting Rowlett.com. We hope you enjoy learning more about the inner workings of your city. You know, Mayor, this is a, a great opportunity each week, every week, to keep our public informed. And, uh, you know, we, we have so many topics, construction and, um, and events and programs. Um, you know, I, I, hope, I would hope every Rowlett resident uh, could, would get a copy of it. And we started the Friday at 5 about a year ago. Yep. And it is the official newsletter mm -hmm. of the city of Rowlett. And mm -hmm. your staff works really, really hard every week to make sure that that is a comprehensive uh, newsletter and it's so informative. So if you are not getting it to your inbox, please, please go out to Rowlett.com and subscribe to that. Hello, I'm Pamela Bell, City of Rowlett Council Member, and this is Jada. I'm here with the Spirit of Rowlett Award winner, Katie Renz. Congratulations. Thank you, and I'm here with Hinton, the Hinton Landfill Kitten. I know, I see that you're enthusiastic about pets and animals and wildlife and everything. <laughs> Can you tell me something about it? I was a veterinary technician um, for, oh gosh, I started in 19... 85 volunteering at a veterinary clinic mm -hmm. uh, in high school and um, then I worked at emergency clinic through college and I've always um, at least worked part-time at a veterinary office as a um, surgical and dental technician and you kind of find that spot of things mm -hmm. that are important to you and these guys are important to me so we rescue wildlife we rescue little kittens that are running around with no parents. Uh, with having two daughters that are in elementary school age, we get a lot of calls to take in guinea pigs and um, rabbits and other pets mm -hmm. that their children have outgrown um, that need to be rehomed. Mm -hmm. So we do a little bit of everything. And I also see that you are involved with some of the city activities. Um, on the Animal Shelter Advisory Board. Mm -hmm. We started that after we lived here a few years, mm -hmm. um, getting involved in boards and realizing how much as a citizen you could accomplish mm -hmm. just by giving some time and learning, mm -hmm. um, really enjoyable. Uh, and I've learned so much. Um, and that kind of makes you want to keep going. Mm -hmm. Once you start seeing what it takes to run a city, you're like, well, what about this? And can we do this? And you understand more. If anybody's interested, in adopting Hinton, he'll be available shortly. His story is we got a post 
on Facebook about somebody hearing a kitten one night out at the Hinton landfill. And we went back the next night and found this little guy and caught him and took him home. And when we're finished with his vetting, he needs to go to a new loving home. He's a very good boy, maybe around um, four months old now. And he's very sweet and snuggly, but he still likes to play a lot. I, I see you have another guest over there. Yes. Hi, oh. Mr. Fluffles. Oh, he's pretty. Mm. This is Mr. Fluffles. Um, we have quite a few mm -hmm. little guinea pigs and bunnies for mm -hmm. adoption. And these make great pets for elementary age kids because they're pretty easy to care for and they're pretty durable. So you see, we have two animals that's, a, that's available for adoption. No, Jada is not. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations on winning the Spirit of Rowlett Award for the month of November 2018. And thank you for, for all that you do for our city and for our animals and et cetera. You just, you're just an awesome lady, Katie. Oh, thank you so much. Um, it, I'm very honored. I'm really hoping to get some exposure for mm -hmm. the animals that need to find homes mm -hmm. uh, that we have because they all need more attention yes. than they can get when we're just basically kind of a way station mm -hmm. to get them through until they find their new forever homes. Well, he is a cutie. Well, mm -hmm. both of them are cuties. Mm -hmm. And good luck. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Welcome back. It is now time for our community bulletin board. Our next council meetings will be held November 6th and November 13th, and our next planning and zoning meetings will be held November 13th and November 27th. City offices will be closed November 22nd and 23rd for the Thanksgiving holiday, and the Rowlett Public Library presents free Friday flicks in November. Join us on Fridays at 3.30 p.m. for a free movie. November the 2nd, the live action Beauty and the Beast. November 9th, the live action Cinderella. November 16th, Remember the Titans. And there's no movie on November 23rd. And then finally on November 30th, Elf. The next low cost animal vaccination clinic will be Sunday, November 4th from 2 to 5 p.m. at the Liberty Grove Animal Hospital. These clinics are held the first Sunday of every month, excluding holidays. And if you're looking to adopt an animal, the Rowlett Animal Shelter is open Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. and is located at 4402 Industrial Street. The next first aid and CPR class is scheduled for November 17th. The cost is $30 and will be held at the Rowlett Community Center from 8.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Please call 972-412-6230 to sign up. Don't forget about Main Street Fest in downtown Rowlett on Saturday, December 1st from 3 to 6 p.m. Kick off the holiday season with a fun-filled event with live music, entertainment, and the spectacular tree lighting ceremony. This year's Main Street Fest will be in conjunction with the Rowlett Chamber of Commerce Sunset Santa 5K. This year's 5K race will begin in front of Bankhead Brewery on Main Street. Early bird registration is only $25 and all runners are guaranteed a t-shirt. Register today at SunsetSanta5K.com. Then on Saturday, December 8th, 5 p.m. to 8 p.m., join us for the second annual Lighted Holiday Parade. Come see the streets of downtown Rowlett filled with decorative floats, live music, and lots of Christmas cheer. And here's a new Parks and Recreation event just announced. It's the inaugural 12 Days of Christmas Fun from November 27th through December 8th. It's Christmas activities every day of the week that's sure to put you in the holiday spirit. Check their website or Facebook page for additional details for each program. In closing, thank you for watching the November 2018 edition of Rowlett on the Water on the Move. Any information or story heard on this show can be found on Rowlett.com. Don't forget to visit the city's Facebook page for the latest up-to-date information. We hope you and your family have a wonderful Thanksgiving. See you next time on the holiday edition of Rowlett on the Water, on the Move.